Hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunrise Daily. Today, I'm trembling. So, good morning and happy International Women's Day to all women out there. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. Good morning, Maupe. Happy International Women's Day to you. You're one of my inspirations. Good morning and welcome to Sunrise Daily on Channels Television. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. I mean, do I need to say anything else? <laughs> <laughs> but really, I mean, you women rock, absolutely. Well, it's a beautiful Wednesday morning here in Lagos, and you're welcome. I'm Kaido Kikielu. Well, yes, indeed. Um, as a result of that, I mean, some of the dailies did highlight uh, those features and what we should actually focus on as well. So um, if I just jump right ahead and take a look at New Telegraph, Yes, much as the front page does talk about appeal courts to rule on INEX application seeking to reconfigure BVAS today, as you may see in some of the other papers. And one of the writers here says, as OBLP applied to conduct physical inspection, Tinubu files fresh application seeking court order to obtain materials to defend his victory. Lawyer faults INEC over plan to reconfigure BVAS say it's ploy to frustrate petitioners that's the front page of new telegraph but at the bottom street we do know that yesterday uh, there was this swearing in uh beg your pardon certificate of return was given to senators elect today will be the version of the house of representatives and then you see international women's day political space shrinks for nigerian women so and then the riders here are uh, also uh, so it's a couple of There's only three females elected into Nigerian Senate. Wow. Three. Okay. Is, it maybe, is that an accounting? Because sometimes you look at that list of INEC and you wonder if it's exhausted. But then 13.5%, 2.7% of states won't have female members' presence at the Senate and House of Reps, respectively. Uh, Baru pledges to promote gender equality, women's rights. How? <laughs> so, um... How is a big question. I mean, you can promise anything you want to promise. It's the hmm. how of it. I think that this year, the theme for uh, the for International Women's Day, mm -hmm. uh, the UN theme, is embrace equity. So while equality is, is important and it's a big deal and it's something that we have not been able to achieve in Nigeria through our laws, uh, you know, the equality, the gender equality bill has been kicked out of the Senate so many times and it hasn't passed. Uh, but equity is another kettle of fish in the sense that you have to give each human being uh, what it is that they need to achieve the outcomes that you're looking for. That's what equity means. So people, are, when they want to illustrate that, they usually use a picture of a man and a small man and maybe a big man who are trying to look over the fence to watch mm -hmm. a football match. If you give the two of them, say, the same pedestal, one will certainly, because of his natural height, he will have uh, an already a, a good advantage, you know, to raise himself up and be able to look through. That same pedestal might not be enough for that little man to be able to watch the same fo football match. So you have to also increase his own pedestal so that he's able to, you have to give him enough for him to be able to look over that barrier yeah. to be able to watch the match. So that's what equity means, giving it enough um, uh, how will I put it now? Given each person, you know, customizing almost like uh, the, to the needs of each person so that you can achieve the same outcome, either in a place of work, either in politics, um, you know, where, wherever it is that, you know, the circumstances might apply, that's what it means. In the digital space, I know there's a lot of focus yeah. on the digital space uh, this particular year. So when the president says that, uh, he's going to give uh, women equal rights. The question is, Mr. President, how? Uh, mm. <laughs> the Guardian is, is the paper. Are you done with the news? Yeah. yeah. So let's quickly take a look at The Guardian now this morning. And uh, they also focus on that case in front of the appeal court. It's a very tricky one. Um, and I, I don't know, but if INEC is not able to get that role, I'm, I'm just wondering whether, will we shift governorship elections? I don't oh, know. It looks tight, tough. It, it looks a bit it like doesn't a, appear as such. Well, let us see what happens. Uh, but look at this. Tinubu files suit as appeal court rules on INEX move to reconfigure Beavers. So that story is also there on the front page. OB opposes INEX, seeks physical inspection of election materials. 70 CSOs kick. PDP rejects INEC B to reconfigure Beavers machines. 
caught someone's eye neck, wiki, others over suit to suspend Saturday's Guba polls in rivers. So that is also making, you might want to read the details, uh, you know, for that particular story. 10th National Assembly won't be Tenubu's rubber stamp, says Oshomale. Uh, the battle has begun, hasn't it? <laughs> In terms of who will be Senate president, especially now that they have collected their certificate of return. Shekarao absent as 98 senators-elect receive certificates of return. A very peculiar situation we see in Kano, whereby uh, Senator Shekarao was announced as the senator under the platform of the NNPP, yet we know he's defected to the PDP. So how is that going to play out? Uh, page 6 is where you find details uh, for, for that particular story. IWD, Buhari celebrates Nigerian women as stakeholders canvas Girl Child Development. Uh, consumer group urges new government to break Disco's monopoly. So that is uh, what you see on the front. But look, we'll look at the face of these famous women doing Nigeria proud in their various fields. I must say, Mukala, I'm so happy that this year I'm not alone on this program. I'm so happy that now I now have you. And indeed, every time we talk about equality and equity, we walk the talk right here. And I'm glad. Uh, that, you know, this will only be the beginning of seeing many more women on this program and, of course, many more political programs here on Channels TV. Yes, indeed, Malque. Sharing um, the stage with you gives me a tremendous sense of fulfillment. And I like quite how you um, defined for us, you know, gave us a definition of terms of the difference between equity and equality and you know just to add to that you know imagine a race i saw this sometime on the front page of the newspapers uh, imagine a race <clears throat> where a man and woman had to embark on and the man is set to go with no hurdles to cross but the woman has the children has the kitchen has um, family concerns has the man <laughs> himself and all of the other gender stereotypes ahead of her to cross. So equity really is about ownership, is about, you know, giving a level playing field for the woman to be able to achieve her dreams, meeting, meeting the woman where she is. So it's sad that we have just three female senators who are going to you know, participate in the legislative uh, process in this 10th National Assembly that's coming. But we look forward to having a female Senate president very soon. So as we reflect on that, let's dive into leadership newspapers this morning. And one of uh, the stories there made me chuckle. We'll get to that in just a moment. But the big story on the front page of leadership uh, gives cause for reflection this morning. It says three days to go, three days to governorship polls, governors tightening news on opposition. Uh, you find details on page four, but let's look at uh, uh, the riders. Wike splits Rivers Labour Party as faction adopts Fubara. Uh, state excos dissolved. I'm not quite sure that that's actually the way the story was uh, rendered in, on other platforms because the uh, factions of the other political parties came yeah. out you know, to commit themselves to... <laughs> Interesting days, really. I mean, seeing what's so playing out in what River State. So that's what makes me chuckle, Kyrie. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that, that's another angle to it. And, mm -hmm. and, I mean, you can understand why. It's, it's days to the governorship election, but the question is how this will impact on, you know, on people the outcome. actually voting yes. either way. Yes, that's a big indeed. question. But we saw the uh, state chairman of the Labour Party coming out himself, yeah. you know, to adopt the governorship uh, candidate of the... PDP and the APC leader also committing the APC to the governorship candidate of the uh, PDP. Let's take a look at the other riders. Party crisis, litigations, cripple opposition in Akwaibom, or your others. 12 parties collapse structures for Niger APC flag bearer. Bagudu, Badaru, APC candidates meet Adamu ahead of polls. So it's going to be a very interesting, uh, you know, battle for the top seat at the subnational level on Saturday. Uh, go above, uh, you know, the big story. You see this one. Tinubu seeks tribunal order to inspect election materials, and uh, you find details inside page seven. Of leadership newspaper and uh, you know the big story just relating to this is how he has assembled a team of senior advocates to defend him in court and the name that tops that list is an interesting one 
that reminds me of Section 65 of the Electoral Act <laughs> and the call for a review of that section of the Electoral Act. Okay. But, Karade, what do I know? Well, certainly maybe not the nitty gritties of law, <laughs> but hey, it's going to be very, very interesting what, months, weeks ahead. So mm -hmm. let's brace up for that one. Absolutely. Okay. Well, take a look at Daily Trust. Uh, you're done with that one. Yes, I, I, I was am. just thinking, I, I kind of love the, the energy between you and Mark Webb this morning. And, and always, really. Uh, I'll try that with Chamberlain. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> IMD coming up soon. <laughs> The Daily Trust newspaper uh, has this one, but this focuses on uh, the economy, the whole Naira notes, and <laughs> do I say palava? We didn't direct banks to disburse old notes, CBN. More banks pay old currency, business outlets reject notes, direct Apex Bank to obey Supreme Court order, Buhari urged. And you have a picture again that shows the situation, the reality of lots of Nigerians, customers waiting to withdraw cash at a bank in Lagos yesterday. I mean, if you've gone to any bank in recent times, you'll know just how much of a, of a headache. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's almost, do I, do I say, evil, wicked, just seeing you having to go through that for your money. And I just ask people, I mean, is it something you can do electronically? If it's not, then hey, by all means, we need to end this ASAP. But that's what we, we have right now. Don't forget that the Supreme Court actually gave that order and judgment on Friday. Presidential poll, Tinubu Atiku Obi assemble legal teams. Uh, Bukola has spoken about that and that other big one. Governors in last minute push woo voters with incentives. Is that vote buying now in this case? Because I've been seeing different things, uh, mm -hmm. different policy, <laughs> reversal, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And by the way, looking at the list of the senators, I only see two who are women mm -hmm. uh, from Rivers and from FCT. Speaking of incentives, Karadi, I, I think I saw something also in Lagos about uh, the return of confiscated cars to the owners in Lagos. So that's Is an example, it, I guess. Uh, an incentive? I, I don't know. Over to you, Chimeling. All right, take a look at Vaga newspaper next. Uh, protest, PDP, LP, tackle APC over sore losers' comment. APC, PCC rules out manipulation in polls. APC desperate, ascribed to Labour Party, accepting Tunubu's sham victory akin to celebrating criminality. Tiku Okowa, I'll defend my victory, Tunubu tells court. Seeks order to scan, obtain electoral materials. Obi Atiku challenge INX plan to reconfigure Beavers. Tribunal defers ruling till today. So you know, many wonder the impact, what sort of impact will this have on the forthcoming governorship and state assembly elections this weekend? But who knows, I guess, um, we will wait and see, but look, don't go, don't, don't necessarily lose yourself with all of these processes as they play themselves. Um, you can see the picture on the front page there as well. But look at this, banks in shock as rejection of old 500 Naira, 1,000 Naira spreads. So what in the world is going on? And how is it, this is part of why we were asking the lawyers yesterday. Well, how this is expected to play out in society. If till today, as we speak, how many days after this ruling came to last week, by the way, and they're still rejecting 500 Naira and 1,000 Naira notes, the old ones. And has the president even spoken up about this? I'm not sure he has. What's going on? Uh, so, oh, boy. Uh, well, big question, really. Big question, but you know, if there was a deadline initially given and you know there was uncertainty around it, the, the chances that it is now etched in the people's mind, according to I think it was Chidi Odin Kalu who was saying that perhaps that money has not lost legitimacy in the eyes of the people. There will have to be like a, a new announcement, you know, that this money is now acceptable and will now be used until the 30th or 31st of December, as the case might be. Otherwise, you might just find more people very suspicious 
um, of you if you are trying to give them the old currency. You think that they are fools? They are not fools. So then, as, as much as there was an awareness of the fact that there was a new currency, there still needs to be that awareness that this money is still acceptable until the 31st. What a scenario year. we'll find ourselves of December in. December this year. Well, all right. I think that wraps it up then, doesn't it? We'll look at some of the dailies uh, here okay. this morning. But we will be back. And by the way, you can tell us your experience wherever you are about this old 500 naira and 1,000 naira notes. We'd love to hear from you. We will be back in a moment. Stay with us.
All right, welcome back. So we're starting off with uh, the governorship candidate of Plateau State in the APC, Natawa Yilwata. He joins us virtually this morning. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on the program today. Well, um, as it is now, uh, first and foremost, could you tell us, so what's going on with your campaign? Is everything going on smooth? Because yesterday, your counterparts told us that you've got no chance where they stand. Chamberlain, good morning. And I, I well, let me just uh, say that the campaign has been going very well. And you could see it reflected in most of the areas we've been to and the acceptance we've gotten across the state, more distributed than any candidate in the state. So I don't think uh, any of them stand my chance in the state. How is it playing now for you? Because um, we know that having seen the way the presidential elections turned out, of course you have people who would draw inference from that, thinking that that may just be the coloration, the way the governorship elections will pan out in Plateau State. And if that were to be the case, you may not necessarily clinch it. So how do you plan to overcome that? If you look at the configuration of the election, uh, the, from, the House of, from the Senate to the House of Reps to the, uh, to the presidential, they were quite different. Different candidates will win different elections in different local governments. Uh, if we take the average score of the election, or the all House of Rep election, for example, across the state, if it were a governorship election, APC would have won the election. You can just do the simple arithmetic and know that the governorship is about distribution across the state and would, would have won it. So, uh, as things stand now, because I mean, the preference, uh, because people vote along different sentiments, and when they dissect those sentiments, sometimes even those watching from us are a bit shocked and surprised that, wait a minute, are these kind of factors still playing a huge role in terms of how we vote in this country? And so um, the candidature of your party uh, at the national level, you know, when that came through, uh, the governor spoke about it, there were still several people who thought, uh, not too sure how they will stick with that one. So concerning that and your ability to convince them that they should look to what you bring to the table, are you succeeding in doing that? I've already been succeeded already. Not the ones that I, I'm, not, I'm succeeding. We've, I think we're the first to get to the people with our manifesto. Uh, that was 2021 December. By then, none of the candidates has a manifesto. I went around all the local governments, visited 196 uh, wards out of 207. And discussing our holding town meetings and engaging the communities and different sectors of the economy. So I think, I strongly believe that Black have heard us and heard us so clear. Moreover, most of our voters were among the young people who believe in us. And the younger generation, which went along with our slogan, Generation Next, are uh, quite an out of what we do. So in all our campaigns, in all our discussion direction with them, it has been perfect. OK, I uh, we'll apologize for at least the it appears to be coming in broken at some point or may have missed out some of what you said. Let's talk a little bit about security. We know it's a huge deal uh, in, in the Plateau and in the Middle Belt region. So what are your specific plans to ensure that the people actually feel safer than ever if you win? First, we want to set up the Plateau State uh, Security Trust Fund, and we'll take that bill to the House of Assembly as one of my first major when elected. I will ensure that 1% of the state IGL we set, you know, the 1% of the contracts at the local government and state level, 1% is taken into the trust fund. And state also contribute to that trust fund monthly uh, by law. And all private sectors also contribute to that trust fund. And with that fund, we will start by having equipment, both hardware and software that will be sufficient enough you know, for the start this community in the state. Secondly, we will mock the, our 
vigilantes, hunters, retired police and retired soldiers. We bring them all under our spirit to outfit in the state called Operation Rainbow. We train them, we deploy them to the rural communities, we arm them with technology, and also all uh, you know, firearms approved by law that can be given to the spirit of outfit as uh, community policing. We deploy to rural communities and also the cities also to ensure that we protect people at the borderlands, especially our border with Kaduna, our border with Bauchi, our border with Taraba, where all the attacks and also kidnapping takes place, and also the city centers. That will ensure that the states get more support. Also, I mean, the adversary of the, 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 the state's solidarity development agency, because where you have solidarity support the state, uh, similar with Zafara, similar with uh, Congo and different other countries, you know, you have issues of uh, security threats around those communities. We we'll bring communities, you know, to engage artisan miners, uh, registration of artisan miners also, and they're forming a cooperative and clearance before they're allowed to be involved in mining at, at you know, the communities. That will ensure that the communities are safer uh, for us also. And then, more, more, moreover, in most people, community attack and kill the rural community. They come with navigation devices and most expensive equipment. If we now allow us to protect the people with technology, protect them with the manpower, we have sufficient funding to ensure we tackle security at this level. These are some of the things we're bringing to the table concerning security in the state. Well, I. Uh, I must say that, you know, the audio was a bit uh, glitchy while I was listening to you, but I, I did pick a few things from what you intend to do. It is interesting to note that your party is currently still in government in Plateau State, and perhaps it is hoping to, you know, give you, pa um, you know, pass on the baton to you. There will be questions as to what it is that the current state government that you intend to do differently and whether or not this is a part of your party's agenda. If it is, you know, why it is that the current government hasn't implemented some of the things that you're talking about. For instance, the issue of artisanal miners. Um, Plateau State used to be known for its tin, and I know it's still blessed with quite a number of uh, solid minerals which it could explore. I am just wondering why is it that it's been difficult, for instance, to form artisanal miners into cooperative groups and maximize uh, some of the opportunities that the federal government has provided uh, for, pe for states that are blessed with solid minerals? But that's what I just mentioned as part of the security architecture I want to even call, that all artisanal miners will be start, they must form cooperative. Was declared by the community and also the state solar development agency. These are some of the, the things we want to do. But most importantly, the state government, you know, has about three leases, you know, um, two in YC, local government, one in Barrigan Naji. We intend to sign joint venture agreement with uh, international partners, or you know, that we mine and we do profit sharing across, you know, across board. That will enable the state to maximize benefit. And that will allow locals also participate in mining at the state level. Okay, well, and what I'm saying, the question I'm asking you is why is it that it's been difficult? Why do, does the APC, assuming that's part of a manifesto of the political party, the APC is currently in government in Plaza State. Why is it so difficult to organize the miners already? That's what I'm asking. You say, it's my own personal manifesto. Because I'm coming as a candidate. So as a candidate, I was coming with my own uh, manifesto. Uh, across years, the state has organized it. So if I'm coming in to do something different, what makes it so difficult? Because for over 20 years, it has not, by, by the, uh, the, the state government has organized that sector very well to ensure we maximize benefit from it. But that's what I want to come and do when elected as a governor of the state. Well, I know that Plateau also has quite a number of educational institutions, and your background is also in education as well as uh, the digital space. And uh, it will be interesting to see what it is that you intend to do about the educational institution, especially the tertiary educational institutions and the products. I mean, that's the people who graduate from these institutions. Because one of the things that we know that almost every state in Nigeria is struggling with is youth unemployment. How do you intend to link? 
think, for instance, uh, the, 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 first of all, improve outcomes from what we get from the institutions and then link them with direct opportunities that are available in your state? I think uh, for me, the most important thing is even the secondary education, where you need to introduce skills, especially technical secondary school. We have only one technical secondary school. I intend to have uh, uh, three technical secondary school, one person in the zone. I intend to change the skill base. Uh, there are skills of the future. We need to introduce them in the scheme of the technical schools. That would be one major thing that we we'll do to ensure that we have a lot of the young people uh, develop skills that are marketable across the globe and make them global citizens, you know, that can get job anywhere in the world. But for tertiary institutions especially, is to ensure that we upgrade the laboratories, workshops, and ensure that we have definite skills for the wind come technology, and uh, then do the skill transfer, and ensure that we bring also entrepreneurship into the schools, ensure that the entrepreneurship are actually skill-based and practical, and they can have hands-on experience. And before they leave the universities, they should be able to get jobs or create jobs themselves. So we, we ensure that uh, we enable them with skills but most importantly, part of our own uh, manifesto said that we are, we are setting aside 10% of the IGL for enterprise uh, uh, opportunities. So young people, especially youths and women, will have opportunity to assess this fund, which is uh, at no interest rate and uh, without collateral. What is the form, form cooperative? The cooperative declared by you know, a business clinic and it's, it's, it's government enabled, but private sector driven to ensure that these young people, whether they're in university or they've graduated, will have opportunity to have funding, to have uh, training, to have skills, and to enable them also create jobs. So they, co they, they become job creators themselves. That would be very important for, for me going forward as right. a government state. Right. So con concerning security, I mean, we, we hear this narrative almost all the time because many will also ask you yes, you've spoken about the excuse me, 1% uh, security fund, you intend to take a bill to the State Assembly to allow you to do that. But many will also ask you, why should they give 1% to security fund when governors have hundreds of millions in security votes? That's why I said that part of the security uh, trust, uh, part of security, fund from the state will be deployed to the school trust fund and it's also we manage outside of the governor we will have the security agencies we have also traditional role as representative the uh, the security outfit in the state and some notable people in the citizen in the state will be part of the trust fund and we manage the trust fund independent of the government to make it more effective than having one person which is the governor only deploying a single money across the state do you plan to run a transparent government? Absolutely. So would you tell the people how much security vote is? With all pleasure. Do you know how much it is right now? I don't know. But you're supposed to be very close ally of the governor. <laughs> Do you tell you to no, how is that? I, well, I'm not I'm not in government, so I shouldn't know. Okay, but Concerning? And I'm not about to ask. You're not going to ask? And I'm not bothered to ask. Oh, okay. So concerning yes. how you emerged, I, I know you, all of those back and forth that went on within your party, uh, several of them, the aspirants who said that they, you, you were foisted on them, they complained loudly, they spoke to the chairman about it, they said they're not sure if they're going to support you if certain things were not done. How are you able to placate all of them now? No, most of them are already with me. And moreover that, I keep on saying, uh, one person challenged my, my emergency in court, only one person out of the people that uh, claim. And moreover, you know, you had people saying that there are 18 people mm -hmm. that uh, went on protest. Most, out of those 18, only nine people bought form. The remaining nine were not people who didn't buy form, and they're claiming that they are going to uh, aspirants. You can't be an aspirant without a form. And uh, out of the nine people, most of them, more than half are already with me, and we're already moving together. You know, I, one of them defected to Labour Party and pick a form. And one of them took me to court. But the person that took me to court also, there's none 
of the ground in my primaries that he challenged. He challenged selection in the election of the the delegates, which are going to be with the primaries itself. And he has not done anything because he didn't actually uh, participate in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the process. And in all the process for selecting a delegate, there was no complaint by anybody because there was opportunity by the party for anybody who has any grudges to actually complain, but nobody let me complain. So uh, do, do, do your supporters or should everyone then believe that you have sorted or meant, uh, you, you've mended all the fences with all of these aspirants and then those who kicked against you, are they all on the same page with you now? Is that what you're saying? There's no party that, that uh, you hardly can get where all the people that pass the election with you will agree with you. It doesn't happen anywhere, hardly, and very rare in Nigeria. So I'm not saying I'm having all of them, but most of them are already with me, or working with them with them in partnership. And uh, for now, I'm comfortable. Yeah. I was going to ask if, if you think that uh, you ha might be having an unfair advantage. I mean, having been, you've had quite a very rich career um, from being a lecturer, being working in the digital space, and also, interestingly, working in the electoral space. You've been a resident electoral commissioner. Uh, I'm just wondering, do you think that that confers on you any advantage, or do you think that that uh, elevates the fact that you must uphold some of the uh, the ideals uh, that we should, you know, uphold a transparent election. Uh, okay, I've conducted elections across the country, different elections, and there's no single election that I conducted that anybody complained about it. You know, I was in Rivers in UK's election, second term. I was in, I was, I was also in a uh, AKT, I was in Ondo, I was in Gino Recall, I was in Benue itself, I was in, I mean, not even an embarrassed election. I was in different election, and nobody has ever challenged my integrity when it comes to election. Um, so it will not be different from what I want to do in this uh, Saturday election. Uh, so I don't see, I, I don't see myself having any advantage, per se, you know, in terms of um, maybe opportunities to either I take advantage of the electoral process. Are you, are, you, are you satisfied and are you confident? I mean, there have been lots of complaints about what has happened in the presidential elections. Um, given that, how confident are you uh, that this Saturday, if things go as planned, uh, that it, you know, the, the, the electoral umpire would live up to its billing? I'm very hopeful. And I'm, I'm very confident that uh, the process will be transparent. You know, the process is offline. The elections, the, 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 the BBAS works offline, doesn't work online. So the, the process that actually, uh, that, that's the conduct of the election itself, I'm voting is offline. But it's, you know, the entry of the results is offline. You only snap a picture by BBAS and, 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 and uh, you know, transmit it. So I'm very confident that uh, my own agents will be at the polling unit. I will ensure that the, the, the process is transparent at the polling unit. And that's all you need. All right. Even though there are several other narratives, which I'm sure you must have heard, is something that since you were in INEC, just uh, left in 2021, that they just hope and wonder that they will not be doing something other than what is expected of them. But we do thank you for... <laughs> <laughs> Chamberlain. Why, why should they fear not? You are in Ireland. You know the ins and outs. How do we know that your <laughs> colleagues there, your former colleagues, won't try to ensure that you know they have safe landing? They are professionals. Okay. All right. We do thank you for coming, and I will wish you all the best. No, no, thank you, Chamberlain. All right. So we'll talk to a couple of other aspirants or candidates. I beg your pardon. In just a moment. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. Now we've been joined by Mohammed Alpha Mustafa, who is the SDP governorship candidate for Nasarawa State. Good morning, and thank you for coming on today. Good morning, Chamberlain, and good morning, viewers. Okay, so um, you are trying to unseat the incumbent governor, who is in the APC. Yeah, well. uh, yes, we've just concluded the presidential elections, and we've seen how the votes have turned out. 
Why do you think that you've got a chance to clinch that seat? Thank you so much, Chamberlain. The people of Nasrallah State have already spoken by giving me this mandate, by giving the SDP mandate. That today, from the National Assembly election, I have two senators, I have two House of Representatives members. Out of five, this has already proven that we're only waiting for the time to be sworn in as the governor of Nasrallah State. Out of five, where? In, in Senate or House of Reps? Out of three Senate. Okay. That's I, have uh, I have two. Out of five as of reps, I had two. So that, that's, uh, well that, that's quite a feat. But does that necessarily mean that, you know, because that happened, that you think that that will give you the required push to win the governorship seat? Exactly. You can see that the people of Nasrallah State are actually yearning for change. The reason why the, I had two senators and the National Assembly is because the people are already tired of the administration of, Nasra, of the governor of Nasrallah Street. So the resistance is what actually led to the National Assembly. So why is it that, why do you think that they will then turn to the SDP and not to the PDP? Yeah, the reason why they should go to the uh, uh, SDP, because everybody is already tired of APC, PDP. They want to try a new party. And indeed, they tried one uh, for the presidential elections. The Labour Party had, uh, would I say, a really big showing for the presidential elections. Yes, indeed, you were able to get two senators. I mean, it's interesting that that did not translate to senatorial or a House of Reps elections or v victory for the Labour Party. But in terms of the uh, showing for the Labour Party, uh, in the presidential polls, uh, the Labour Party candidate certainly has a, a, a stronger chance than you do, don't you think so? You see, uh, when it comes to the state election, sometimes it changes from the National Assembly election. Even the turnout of the election, what we're expecting to see this time around is going to be like double of what actually comes out, because people actually prefer to come out more in the state assembly, because this is the, actually the election that is closer to them than those in the federal government or those in the national, uh, national election. So I assured you, we've already done our homework. Uh, SDP being the, a new party in the Nasrallah state has already been proven to you that the people could be able to identify the horse, could be able to cast the vote. And I'm not also a new in the system. I was a candidate in 2019 with the APM. And today, all of us decided to move to actually SDP. That is to say, the wing of the power in Nasrallah State has already been blown to SDP, and I assured you, we're going to take over Nasrallah State. Nasrallah State is a very strategic state in the North Central. I mean, sharing borders directly with the federal capital territory, and it has the uh, immense potential. Uh, even though I know the the capital Lafia is uh, is a long way from the federal capital yeah, territory, true. but you know, people who come to the F City, most people who work in the F City, or a significant number of people who work in the FCT, live in Nasarawa State, in Maraba, Yanya, um, Masaka, and that particular axis. Uh, I'm just wondering, what, are the new, what exactly is different that you intend to promise um, the people, uh, not just living in, this er in these areas, but generally the people of your state, in terms of what their lot has been under the APC and what your party is bringing to bear? You see, when you look at SDP, SDP is actually a political party of ideology. Ideology politics is actually what is not in place in Nigeria. What, we, what is the ideology you're bringing? Yes, the ideology we're bringing is actually to come and change the dimension of education, health, uh, creating wealth, especially creating wealth. In terms of creating wealth, what we intend to do is to use the uh, human and uh, natural resources we do have to harness them and how we can put it into the economy for people to have benefit on it. Uh, when you look at it, uh, I don't know if you know Gitata. Gitata is in Karo local government, where you're speaking. We have a rock in Gitata town, where we intend to do a spring water company. This will take us just about within one year of our administration, we'll make the Gitata. We'll make a research in that stone. We had, uh, if, we have been, if we are going to be taking like 33,000 liters of water, and it's going to last, it's going to take us to between 23 to 30 years, that water will stay there. If we do a, a, a rubber water for sale for the Nasrallah state people, we're going to be generating revenue. This is creating wealth and creating employment at the same time. If you go to Angwan Chiawa on your way to Lafia, we had uh, a rock where we intend 
to do something that is uh, a creation center that is better than Obudukatu rent in that particular hill, the Igon Hill. This is also going to create employment and also going to create wealth. If you go to life here, what we intend to do, National State is a civil service state. And no government has ever come to think, oh, this is a civil service state waiting for allocation to come from Abuja. How do we create our wealth using our natural resources? This is what we are coming for. So in life here town, I have what I call border market. This border market is going to be two. One it will be between Nasra Igon and Lafia. That I'm going to have about 1,200 shops. What I intend to achieve with the shops of their market, because we have an airport in Lafia. It's a cargo airport. Built by this administration. Built by this administration, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. An administration must do something. Mm -hmm. The money belongs to the people of Nasra State. What we are coming to do is to build on what is on ground and what they've not even intend to do. So don't so, you think that the people of Nasara would want to see yeah. uh, what further? Because if for a number of people, that was an ambitious project for yes. Nasarawa as a state government to be I able to take on a, a yes. cargo airport. And yes. it, it's supposed to help the agricultural produce being you know, produced in Nasarawa state uh, you know, to get out of the state easily. Uh, you don't have to depend on the, on the airports in Abuja. So don't you think that the people of Nasarawa given the fact that the current governor has only spent four years and has been able to show something in that four years, mm -hmm. uh, that perhaps they might want to see his plans come to fruition before they want to try somebody else. Yes, you see, if somebody will stay up to three years in an office, he should have be able to prove in himself what he has done to the people. And as at this time, we should be expecting people to be resisting that, no, we don't hand another party. What we need is this same APC. But from the vote we had in Nasrallah State, you can see the rejection of the people of Nasrallah State. That is why I'm giving you the analysis that whatever we have on ground we're doing, if you allow me to do the analysis of the market I want to do for the Nasrallah State, that alone, if it is what I've done in four years, no one will come and contest with me because that would have changed the dimension of Nasrallah State. Mm -hmm. I, I find it interesting that you say nobody will come and contest with you because yes. the idea of a democracy is that people no, will what, always what, you know come what and I mean? contest with no, you. No, you know what I but, mean, that people will not come and contest? Yeah. During the time of uh, CPC, the former governor, Tankwal Makura, when he did one time, because he did very well, and we must appreciate him for what he done, because we had never done revolution in Nasra as at that time. When he wanted to go for a second time, people were saying, no, the tenor of your zone has already elapsed. People came to reject. There are no candidates should come out, and people stood by him and mm -hmm. give him the second mandate. Mm -hmm. That is what I mean. Oh, I'm not okay. saying that nobody will contest. Of oh, course you oh, will contest, so but the people will be able to vote for the right person they want. Okay. So what I was trying to, I mean, the question I was really trying to put across yes. is in terms of uh, the fruition of the project of the state gov governor. Yes. Uh, you, you talked about how, yes, is the, the airport is, is the something. The airport was built by uh, the former administration, even though it's still uh, APC, Alaji Tonko al -Makura. He was the one that built the airport. And what we have in our knowledge is that he commissioned the airport, aircraft has landed in the airport. That is what we had. If the airport is going to be recommissioned again, that will call it a fraud of politics. Was it well, functional? Well, exactly. Yeah. When you say functional, what we know for the airport is for uh, aircraft to land and take off. And we've seen that airport, uh, uh, aircraft has landed and take off, sure. and he said that he has commissioned it before he left. So what exactly is your point, that the governor, the current government there is not being straightforward with it? Of course it's not being straightforward because the people of Nassau State are watching. They've seen what is happening. They have their brain. You mm. cannot come up and watch them. You say that the APC has been rejected, but what we understand is that uh, owing to the internal politics of the APC, that's why the candidates who won on the platform of the SDP defected and went to the, uh, the SDP where they were able to actualize their ambition, yes. but that they're still actively working for the APC. Is you that see, true? Yeah, you see, when you ask of these, uh, the people of Nasara State are different from the candidates. And uh, we that we do ideological politics, it's difficult for us to deal with the people that do money back politics. Money back politics is about individuals, and you can find them in any party. So if you see anybody in my party, I've been the leader of the SDP in Nasara State today, and you see anybody that is a candidate in Nasara State going to do some. Uh, uh, marriage without dory with another party. This is to assure you that people are doing money back politics and the well, people of Nasra State are seeing. So but does to that assure you that I have that I don't have that in my record. Let me understand this. Yes. If people move from one party to the other, you yes. think they are doing money back politics? Yes. But I thought you said you moved yourself from APM yes, to I SDP. Moved. You see I have a reason of moving from APM. Isn't that money back politics too? No. Don't you see what is happening in APM? You are a, you are a journalist. You know what is happening in APM today that APM has a faction. 
APM as a faction, up to today, they're still in court. That was the reason. This is enough reason for me to leave a party. We had a faction. They were not having, not having candidates. They were having two candidates. I know we were accepting one. The other one, I know we were not accepting. We were having two chairmen. This is enough for me to leave a party. So does it mean that during your campaign, yes. you're not going to mobilize people? You won't uh, do what politicians do on election, before elections, spending money on the electorate? Of course we spend money. That's mo isn't that what No, for mobilization of moving to the people, but we don't rent crowds. I don't rent crowds on politics. And go and follow my accident of politics in the state. I don't rent crowds. Whatever crowd you see around me are natural crowds and people with their natural love. Well, well, let's go to Lagos because, well, I mean, we've tried, by the way, to get across to the Labour Party governorship candidate in Nassau. I said he's been unresponsive, so we don't know why that is the case. Though. But our colleagues in Lagos have got questions for you. Go ahead, guys. Well, thanks, Chamberlain. Um, some stuff are interesting, really, because you've had people from the APC also defect uh, to your party, the SDP. In fact, at least two of the winners in the National Assembly election had moved from the APC to the SDP. So the question would also be... What was responsible for that? Going by your analogy or theory, is that still the same money? Is it money back or money bag uh, politics you talked about? But I'd like to focus on uh, two issues. One, security. Uh, I recall uh, the governor, the current governor, speaking about, we're raising an alarm uh, that Boko Haram seems to be regrouping in Nasarawa State. And we've seen uh, kidnappings. In fact, it's been said that Nasarawa State or some parts have been some sort of safe haven uh, for kidnappers or is it bandits who kidnap uh, on the fringes and then hide and maybe mountainous regions or areas uh, in Nasarawa State. And I wonder uh, what you're thinking regarding security. I, I mean, I'll get to the Benue part of this, but uh, Regarding banditry, terrorism, do you have a, a game plan, a blueprint that you want to implement for your state? Very well, any serious government that doesn't have a security plan is not a government of the people. What we intend to do as for security, when we come on board, uh, I'm going to have what we call neighbor watch crime. This neighbor watch crime, I'm going to have, I'm going to actually employ about 5,000 youth to train them on intelligence and then put them across Nasra State. So that the major problems we're having in security, you've mentioned that people were coming to settle in Nasra State. If we have people that we've trained and they are having intelligence, that they are going to be working in their neighborhood. When they see a new person around, they should be able to know this person was not living here before, who are you? Then they should be able to send an intelligent to the, uh, to the, to the unit. And by the time they send the intelligent, uh, immediately, we should be able to inform the police, army, and what have you. So what I have is going to be a neighbor watch crime. Neighbor watch crime is going to be working. When you are around anywhere in Nasrallah State, you can't walk within one kilometer without seeing them with their gadget, the gadget that will be using GPRS. In case of anything between 300 and 600 radio, you will be able to press it. Just like I'm coming to Channel's Television, if I've never been, what I use, send me a location. I will use the Google map to come here without asking for address. Why don't you utilize all this for security? If you come on board, we are going to train people to give them this on the security. And also another thing that is going to have, we're going to have is the grazing area that I'm going to make sure that I, the grazing area that has been existing even before Nigeria, it has been there. But a lot of people have gone there to be having building and be farming. This is what trigger people to go to their farms. So we're going to actually reintroduce the grazing area. When we introduce the grazing area, we're going to be having uh, some plant on it uh, putting water, in fact, doing budget. What I want to introduce this time around is for me as a governor to be doing budget for people rearing their cows. When we do budget, just like we do in agriculture, what we do in agriculture mostly is to do budget and give people whatever they need for agriculture. We'll also be doing budget so that when we have budget, we'll be able to put some grasses in the grazing area, water the grasses, have some veterinary hospital, we'll be able to also be collecting revenue from them. So this I would have to stop the problem of uh, uh, farmers and others in the Sarawak State, which is one of the major security challenges we're having. And then we'll also be generating revenue. By, uh, like you said, no, government is giving with the right hand, is collecting with the left hand. But it's better we do that to curtail the security problem, and the people from the neighbor watch crime will also be co-opted the, the children of the uh, headers and the children of the farmers will also be part of it. 
So the security apparatus will not only be in the city, rather than the security apparatus will be everywhere across Nasra State. That is why it's called neighbor watch crime. When you are trained, you are going to be working within your neighborhood because you know your neighborhood better than any other person in Nasra State. Uh, I think when we have this, and we have what we call Operation Nasra in Nasra State, I want to take a sample of what we have like RRS in Lagos. I will reintroduce that using the security vote and uh, being transparent to the people that this is what I call it as a security vote and this is what I'm using it for. Buying AK-47 for the military, AK-49 for the military, AK-47 for the police from my security vote, at least they will be using it in the Sahara State. If you, are a if you are transferred to another place, you are not going to go with our arm. The arm is going to be used within the Sahara State and the neighbor watch crime is going to also co into the operation Nasra in Nasra State, will be able to buy them some equipment. So that within five minutes, anywhere you are in Nasra State, you should be able to have this communication that there's a security problem, and whatever it is, if it is well armed, it is going to be curtailed. This is like to introduce right. the president of government almost at every location. Okay, for me, coming now, Mr. Because Mr. Fox, most of just... this problem always start with one person. Right, uh, part of Mostly me... Mostly it always start with one person. Okay, uh, part then of me... If, Pardon me to come in, uh, just because of time, I'd like to just get clarity. Did you say Neighbor Watch Crime? Is that the name? Neighbor Watch Crime. Neighbor Watch Crime God. Okay, Neighbor Watch Crime God, because I was, there was something hanging there. But uh, speak to these two yes, issues. God, sorry. Right, it's, it's okay. Two issues. You said that uh, you would have grazing reserves, and you talked about grazing reserves that uh, uh, that. Uh, been in operation before Nigeria. Are you referring to the old grazing routes, uh, which were, was quite controversial? I, I remember the president talking about it, and it was quite controversial with states saying, uh, well, you can't come up with that when we have our own land. So are you referring to those old grazing routes, uh, which was a bone of contention uh, some months or years back? You see, when you say it's in contention, what, uh, what ordinarily a government should do if you have it in contention, it's for you to remap within your state and allow people to be grazing. So if it's in contention because it's a federal government thing, within your state you can agree with something, gazette it, and allow it for people to be working. Is it not better you do it than allowing people to be killing themselves because of issue of farmer ahead of us? You see, when you look at these uh, cows going around, when they are hungry, they are alive. They must be, they will be forced to go and eat people's produce. Well, by the time you find a grazing area for them, you will be able to plan some things to them for them to be using. And don't think they will be leaving their grazing area to go to anybody's farm. So if the federal government is saying that this place is contention, you as a state governor, you will try to reintroduce your own. Gazette it and allow it to happen. Just so how will it so work? The problem. So how exactly will it work? Uh, who's, um, where would you get the land from? Because uh, there are people who own lands, farmers, for example, and that has been a major uh, issue as, as you talked about. So where will the land come from? Will there be an agreement uh, with those who own lands and, and you say, well, we'll pay you this amount, you give us your land. How exactly will it work? And don't forget the, uh, the issues with the Benue State Government as well. Uh, we've seen the Benue State Government uh, actually, will I say, impounding cattle who have uh, uh, crossed maybe farmlands, who have just wandered uh, into those spaces. So how exactly do you plan to make that work? You see, when you talk of the interest of people, it has superseded the interest of individual. We are talking of between life and death. And you say we're going to collect land? So we should allow our people to be dying just because we don't want to collect land? We negotiate the land. Whoever that has the land, whoever community that has the land will tell them it's better for us to do it. Where we do compensation, we compensate them. Where there is no necessary of compensation, we talk to them. Then we'll be able to introduce it. It's better we do this than to say people have land and they are farming. Look, you see, in Nasra State, we had no problem of land. The land we have in Nasra State, I don't know when that we're going to finish farming the whole of the land in Nasra State. So we're going to reintroduce it where it's going to be necessary for people to make use of it so that we'll curtail the issue of high seas between the headers and farmers. Uh, Mr. Mustafa, uh, I'd, I'm more interested in the politics, you know, particularly as we head into uh, the governorship elections on Saturday. You talk a lot, in fact, you boast about having two senators in your bag and two House of Reps members. But uh, some would say, uh, according to reports, that some of these senators supported uh, the election of the presidential candidate 
of the APC, the All Progressives Congress. So um, as a result, the reports are to the effect that perhaps you are only there to, you know, to bring credibility to the exercise, not uh, particularly because you are there seriously to win the election. What, what would you say to this? Uh, even though uh, we didn't get you right, but I think with the question you are trying to ask, that our candidate has support the APC candidate. If you are from the media, we'll be saying our candidate has done anti-party. Are you already reporting us that we should take them to court that there's an anti-party activities in my party? I'm very sure the national are hearing you. And if there is anti-party activities in our party, I assured you that the party is going to deal with the people that did anti-party during the elections. I assure you this. Because anti-party is the highest crime that everybody will do in politics. We have a candidate, a credible candidate, a credible presidential candidate. If today I'm hearing from you that this candidate has deviated to go to another party, to go and do APC candidate, we'll go and ask them, what are they looking for? And we're calling for the national after investigation. If these people found that they supported another party for anti-party, I think the law has already speculated on what happened to who do anti-party. But do you deny that uh, your candidates who have now won the National Assembly election supported uh, the presidential candidate of the APC in the just concluded presidential election? You see, I think they are in the better position to say it. They are in the better position to say whether they support or not support. Election has already gone and passed. We are talking of the next election. And I think we should concentrate on the next election. If they have not supported, that is what I said. After the whole report, you hear the verdict or you hear the statement of the national body or who do anti-party and what is the right thing to do in the party. Now, um, if we take a close look at the results of the presidential election, it was a very close race between the Labour Party, uh, the PDP, and the All Progressives Congress in Nasarawa State. And uh, with those numbers, the SDP is nowhere near, uh, you know, being a contender in the election if we were to project into the governorship elections coming up on Saturday. So where do you uh, project that you get your votes from in the a Saturday governorship election. You see, when you look at elections in Nigeria, when you talk of president, the president people always assume this is the number one citizen. He goes vote from the 36 state. When you look at the National Assembly, the senatorial, some of them in my state had five, and my own constituency had three. And when you look at the gubernatorial, I had 13 local government, and means with the development areas. This alone would have told you that politics is our grassroots. Politics is local, and politics is our grassroots. I assured you that what we're expecting is people to come out in mass to vote for, for, to vote for credibility. And I assured you, SDP has a credible candidate. And you are going to see what we are going to have in Nasrallah State. Mm. Um, w when you talk about uh, the people of Nasara being uh, disillusioned with the current government, uh, some others will refer to the uh, many projects, you know, of the current uh, uh, government in Nasara State, uh, primary health care centers built in uh, some local governments, uh, roads built to link some local governments. Uh, just to mention a few besides the cargo airport that you also mentioned earlier on, uh, it would seem like uh, the, the other political parties are profiting from the division in the All Progressives Congress in Nasarawa State and not necessarily because of underperformance of the current government in Nasarawa State. If you said it's not because of the underperformance, uh, as a journalist, I would have expected you to go to Nasrawa, speak to the people of grassroots in Nasrawa, ask them if there is any performance in Nasrawa State. This administration has done nothing in Nasrawa State in terms of performance. Maybe we we'll read just between 5 to 10 percent when you are having 100. Look, let me, be, let me assure you that what I expect is what we call investigative journalism. When I come here, what I expect to get from this uh, uh, TV station is for people to tell me when we go to Nasrallah, this is what we heard. People are rejecting APC already in Nasrallah State. And I assured you, during the election, you will see it in the ballot.
Mm. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't like to call campaign for the All Progressives Congress. If not, I would have, you know, tried to I'll outline some of the projects. But Nasarawa bears proximity to the federal capital territory, and it's also a state, you know, that is known for mineral resources. We could talk about gold. We could also talk about lithium. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, the tiles, uh, you know, used to, uh, you know, for interior decor are found in Nasarawa State. What are your plans, you know, for uh, mineral development in Nasarawa State and to the effect that uh, to help this to shore up the internally generated revenue of that state should you become governor? Uh, if I become the governor of uh, Nasarawa State, even though before I go for that, I wanted to ask you, are you sure you are not an APC member? But Tango, you'll be able to know that I'm marking that already. Uh, if I become the governor of Nasarawa State, if God has chosen me to be with the support of people of Nasarawa State, uh, when it comes to the solid mineral, we cannot just be called home of solid mineral just like that. Our motto is home of solid mineral. And everybody has identified that if it is solid mineral, Nestor State is number one. But we as a state, we are not benefiting anything. You will find some skeletal company coming around with, uh, with what called expatriate, 100% working within Nestor State. But because it's a government project, uh, because it's a government uh, that has the responsibility to assign who to mine, uh, when we come on board, we are going to have a policy that 60% of whoever that is working in Nasra State or has a project in Nasra State to do mining, 60% must be employed from Nasra State. If we do this, we will be able to know what is happening in our mining. This would have served as an intelligence for us for what they are mining. And uh, when we come on board, I assured you, we are going to work with the people in the National Assembly to try to change some of this law. The law we are having today uh, in harnessing uh, uh, solid mineral, I think that law is the key. We need to readjust it and see how the state will be able to hold the, what the natural thing they're having in their state. Uh, even though we as a state, when we come on board, if they still maintain the same law, we're going to have a company that belongs to the state, that we also will come to the federal government to give us some places that are mapped for this thing, so that we also can be investing into the same solid mineral in the natural state. All right, Mr. Musafa, just to uh, put this out that we are channels television uh, journalists, we leave the politicking and the partisan politicking to you politicians. So, yes, mm -hmm. we'll ask the questions, yeah. whichever way it comes across, I mean, the questions are for you yes. uh, to answer. But I'll uh, okay. quickly speak to this point about uh, revenue generation, because, I mean, you've talked about ideas, uh, the security, mm. the neighbor watch security, mm. uh, Thing you talked about, I'm not quite sure what that term neighbor, is. Neighbor was, yeah, yeah. Uh, neighbor watch crime guard. Exactly that one. Neighbor watch guard. Uh, exactly the markets you talked about, all of that. You will need mm. money uh, as, as as a state, and and this government has been able to, uh, according to it, boosts IGR by 20 percent. I think as at last count, it was 16.5 billion naira IGR. Uh, what is your goal when it comes to IGR raising revenue? Because I mean, everything literally rises and falls on money. What is your goal? What is your target as if you were elected governor, perhaps in your first year uh, in office? You see, uh, let me assure you that when it comes to the issue of revenue, first of all, we take advantage of our proximity to Abuja. And I assure you, if I put things on ground, Karo Elon would have been generating revenue that will hold the whole Nasra state. How much, how much is the goal? When you talk of issue of generation revenue, all how these how projects, is, all these projects that I'm going to have in. How much is your target? You said that uh, you'll be able to generate just how much? You see, my target is to actually jack the IGR of Nasra State by increasing it by 60%. To what, to 60%. what figure? Cut so what figure are you looking at then? Yes, what I'm looking at is that uh, to actually partner with the private sector in all the things we do, like all these projects I'm telling you, if we as a state, we don't have money, we should be able to provide up to 40%, then allow the 60% for the private sector to come in. And by the time we finish all these projects, revenue will not be an issue in Nasra State. And especially in terms of generating revenue, we have the area of creating wealth in Nasra State, which is farming. If we come on board, we as a government will be farming. And we also encourage people to be farming. So as we're farming, uh, and encourage people to be farming. We will go to the uh, specialist bank, like maybe uh, Bank of Agriculture, Bank of uh, Industry, uh, Nixim, Afrizim. Money, they were having their money there. The reason why people don't go there to access money because they have no guarantor. 
because it's going to be a government of the people, we're going to guarantee they don't have money, go to individual community, give me between 50 and 100 people, then I'll be able to, in, I'll be able to put like 100 uh, million in each community, give them whatever is the interest, the government should be able to pay for them. And it's going to be like a long time loan, which is going to take them about 10 years to pay. Look, by the time we put this in place, I assure you, we are farmers. Natural state of farm. There's plan. nothing we farm in Nigeria right. that you don't rate us between number one to number five. Quite in interesting state. plan you have laid out. In fact, I imagine people listening to you and just picturing that El Dorado. But in terms of getting those funding, don't forget there needs to be counterpart funding, and that's where uh, lots of states actually miss out because they can't provide the counterpart funding. So in any case, things fall apart. But uh, more importantly. Is, is, is the fact that I need you to speak to uh, this point about IGR. Uh, the point just eluded me right now, but uh, okay, you want me to tell us to Abuja? Okay, uh, it's back to you guys in Abuja because of time now. Thank you. All right, uh, um, Hamid Afa Mustafa, the governorship candidate of the SDP. We do thank you for coming on and we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the great opportunity. All right, and we also did reach out to the candidate of the PDP. He was scheduled to be on the program today, but uh, can't get across to him to join the conversation. <laughs> so we'll then move on to another governorship candidate. Uh, this is Mascot Uzokalu, who is a governorship candidate of the Action People's Party. He joins us virtually from Abia State. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on the program today. I know you've said you're prepared. I know you said you've got chance and momentum, and you said you have a huge opportunity to participate. But after what happened with the presidential elections, how do you feel now? You think you still have a chance? Well, the pres presidential election was mostly the church versus other political parties. The church? The church versus other parties. Yes. Was the church on the ballot? Because the church is promoting. No, the church is promoted for people to go out and vote for Labour Party. Oh. Because of the candidature of, um, of uh, Governor Obi. So uh, it was the church versus other political parties. Today, the last Sunday, the churches also came back and said, go and vote your conscience. Vote for the individual who will um, uh, fix the state, who will repair, who fits the profile of what you want as a governor and leaders of the state. Well, so, well, well um, how does that we, play out? Pardon me, when you say the church promoted that, in spite of that, Abga won elections in the states. Other parties won elections in the states. So, what has that still got to do with anything? No, no, no. W well, I thought you were talking about the uh, uh, most of the uh, sweep that we had from uh, the presidential candidate yes, within that, that's the what southeast I zone. Okay. It, was, it was presidential and national assembly elections. Okay. So different yes. parties Abga also won. won election. Um, APC won election. Mm -hmm. um, that's correct. Different parties won, but because of the church pronunciation, because there, there are candidates who didn't even campaign, who won election. So you ask what happened. So what we're saying is that with the, with the doctrine from the churches, it was easier for people to just vote all the way Labour, which is not going to happen this Saturday. That's what I'm trying to say. So what is going to happen this Saturday then? What do you think is going to happen? People are going to vote for competency. People are going to vote for individual. People are going to vote for the profile of who they want as governor. And you, you, do you think you have a chance with that in spite and of all I the other candidates? I fit the profile of what Abians are looking for a governor. Sure, I, uh, I have gone round. I'm the only candidate that has gone to almost virtually every village in the state. I'm the only candidate that has uh, gone out to promote and tell the people what I would do differently as governor. I'm the only candidate that has visited almost every corner of Abia State, passing and, and passing my message of uh, of good governance. So I am confident that uh, the the polls will be in our favour. I have said it. I even said on your station the last time I was there that Abia will be uh, governed by uh, an opposition party, and we will see that happen. And but, my party will be the government will be the party that will govern Abia State. But that opposition party can also be Labour Party. It can also be APC. It can also be uh, there are several opposition parties, don't you think? Yes, but uh, we have we've around, we've passed our message, and we, we are confident where we are right now. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I wonder what drives your confidence, though. I mean, almost every politician, though, that you normally would speak with will be very confident. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, D-Day is almost here, and mm -hmm. I think that, you know, eventually we'll get to know whether you have a right to be confident or not. What we do know, however, was that um, at some point close to the presidential elections, uh, the APC, uh, I think, suspended... Uh, your elder brother, who was once governor of Abia State, for anti-party activities, they said he was supporting you um, or supporting another party other than that of the APC. You can tell us if it was your party that he was... And this is my own assumption that perhaps he was supporting you. Uh, but you can tell us if that is correct, and maybe that's part of where you get your confidence from. Uh, that, that is actually fake news. Um, uh, no, <laughs> well, my brother's suspicion is actually fake news. Um, he's a he's a national officer, so the uh, the local, even the local, cannot so because uh, based on his appointment, he can only be suspended by the national working committee, uh, based on the rules of uh, and and the uh, guidelines of APC. So is he supporting you or not? So that's actually fake news. My confidence comes from having gone down. Well, he will make. I'm sure he will make you. He will. He will vote on on D Day, and the candidate he will vote for is of, is of his choice. Will he um, be showing I it can, this he's time around? Member, he's not a member of my party. <laughs> he's not a member of my party. So I cannot tell you he's supporting me, but uh, I'm sure he will vote, and he will vote based on his conscience. You know, part of what happened on the presidential elections, and you know, it's interesting how you've said that that is fake news, not that that. Uh, was reversed, or perhaps, you know, the national APC overrode what was happening at the state level of the uh, party. I mean, there'll be, there'll, be, there'll be interesting intrigues as to what actually transpired and what gave rise to that particular story. But one of the things we know he did, because after saying that, you know, almost all the candidates who were running were his friends at the presidential elections, on D-Day on when he voted, he showed his ballot paper. Is he going to be doing the same for the governorship elections? Just, I'm just curious. Would you like him to do the same? I, I, that would be the question you have to ask. <laughs> that would be the qu question you have to ask him. Would, would you like him to do the same, to, to, to tell people when, who he actually voted for or where election. his loyalties um, lie? Well, I didn't even know he was going to do that on the presidential election. So I guess it would be his decision on what to do or what to show as well. Okay, interesting times coming. But precisely what would you be offering differently from what the, P, the, the, the governorship, well, the current governor or the PDP? I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to lump both the person and the party, even though politicians in their wisdom like to separate the party from themselves. But we know that if you don't have a party, you can't run. And oftentimes, your party is supposed to market its own manifesto. So what precisely do you think that you, your party is going to be doing differently from what the PDP has done in government in Abia State? Well, for one, Abia is known for commerce. Um, currently, we are operating on somewhere about 3 trillion um, GDP. Um, Abia should easily be above 10 trillion uh, in GDP. And when you look at it, uh, a lot has to do with the, the infrastructural development of the state. Um, so. A lot of industries have shut down due to uh, infrastructural problem, and so uh, part of what we're going to focus on is to uh, uh, restore back infrastructure, go back and look at those infrastructure. So those will be our top uh, focus. Abia as well, as well has high unemployment rate. As you know, the national unemployment rate is somewhere about 34%. Um, for Abia, we've seen numbers from 52% to about 65%, depending on uh, what record you're looking at. But it comes to show that Abia is almost twice as the national unemployment rate. So, and 60 to 70% of those people are, are the youths of, uh, of Abia State. So, it lets you know that we also have huge youth, unemplo youth unemployment. So, um... Before we take you up on some other matters um, of your we manifesto. Need to find a way to get them youthfully engaged. Okay, pardon me. Uh, it was coming so, in broken at the time. So what are your expectations concerning the electoral officers? 
specifically uploading results, conduct of INEC officials, what assurances do you have from the resident electoral commissioner? Well, we well, have the same assurances you are hearing. So um, we are already we've been working on this for how many months? So everybody is ready to go and dig it out. So we have the same. Not do anything different from what the national is telling them to do. So whatever information you're getting from the national is what we are what we are hearing. Uh, going by what happened the last weekend. Um, the only thing we could have observed in Abia were materials arrived very, very late, and then which now, which which now affected voting, which also affected collection. So we're hoping um, that materials can arrive early enough, so voting will start early, so collection will also start early. Then that will give the room for uh, uh, e-collections and things of that nature. So. We're hoping that things will be done differently on, on this Saturday. We're hoping that INEC has had two weeks to learn the mistakes that they made and make the corrections. Let's bring in our colleagues from Lagos. Thanks, uh, Chamberlain. Uh, let me just, I, I know usually when we have conversations with you or when you have conversations, your brother always comes up and it's understandable. I mean, you're from a political family, from even your mother, uh, very actively involved in politics. But we've seen what played out in Abia State with, uh, you know, this last election uh, from the presidential to the National Assembly, Labour Party getting seven of the National Assembly seats, literally uh, sweeping other, can other, other parties which we had known to be established, the APC, uh, the PDP, even APGA. And, and I wonder, uh, with this trend, with the love that it would seem the voters have for Labour Party and as we saw the presidential candidate, national assembly candidate, and we're waiting to see with the governorship candidate. What are you selling uh, to the people which you think is different uh, uh, from what the Labour Party is offering fundamentally? Is there a difference? Because I think that will be a major uh, deciding factor for the voters on Saturday. I'm not sure that uh, you got my question. I, I know this has been having glitches with the audio, uh, but are you there? Okay, uh, there you go with that glitch again. Uh, hopefully we can get him back uh, to respond to that question and more. I mean, decision day is just what, uh, three, four days away. Uh, yes, there's lots of issues around uh, logistics, as uh, Chamberlain raised uh, with INEC uh, and the BVAS and the uploading the IREF and all of that. But it's always important to also look at, I mean, while we build up to that, the manifesto of the candidates and seeing what played out, particularly in the Southeast, mm. just two weeks ago, there'll be questions as to whether or not that will be sustained or there will be a significant change uh, from what we saw. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Mr. Mascot Uzokalu, being from Abia State, it yeah. will also be interesting to know what uh, plans he has for traders in Abia State, you know, considering Abia being also one of the uh, commercial nerve centers in the southeast, you know, and uh, compared with, you know, what other candidates are offering, it seems as if uh, that state, you know, is also taking in the message of the Labour Party in that state. So what chances, you know, uh, does he have against, you know, that wind that is currently blowing, mm. you know, in the southeast, um, you know, how he hopes to counter it and uh, ensure that his own message comes on stronger in Abia State. It'll be interesting to know his thoughts in that regard as we hope that uh, all of those issues will be resolved, uh, the, uh, the glitches and audio will be resolved and we can have him come back to talk about that. Well, he's his brother, usually. He comes up in that conversation <laughs> and I know, well. <laughs> I imagine how he feels every time, but his brother won his election uh, for Abia North Senatorial District. Uh, we had the Labour Party also winning Central and Abga winning uh, Abia South, that's for the senatorial election. But if you look at the uh, the, the House of Representatives uh, election, Results. the result, by the way, their certificate of return is expected to be presented to them today. today. You see that Labour Party had uh, Abba North, Abba South, had um, Arochuku, Ohafia, had Ikwano, Umaya that's North. Four. Four. That's that's four already. If you add yeah. the Senate, uh, Isialangwa North and Five. South, uh, Isakwato, uh, Umenochi, that's six. Six. Then uh, Obingwa, 
uh, Osisioma and uh, Ogunagbo. That's um, that's seven. 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 I understand that Mr. Mascoth is is ready, is ready now. Uh, so the question was basically, uh, what do you have that is fundamentally maybe different, or that you expect will sell better? Uh, than what the Labour Party has presented, which we have seen in the voting pattern uh, for Abia State. Let me restate again. The last election was mostly um, the churches versus other political parties. That's why you see there are some candidates of that party that did not really campaign, that did not really work hard. And today they are maybe in the National Assembly. So it's because of the orientation of the churches towards, uh, towards, this, um, towards this matter. So what I'm saying is that the election of this Saturday will be, will be different, will be different, because uh, Adi has gone through uh, a time of struggle, um, a time of difficulty, and so people are looking for that one individual, that one individual that can hopefully rescue Adi State from the problems that defines itself today. And that one individual, repeatedly, when it's talked about, that one individual is me. Uh, you know, I, I've seen the, the, uh, the campaigns in, in Abia State, and I've seen how uh, the candidates have campaigned across board their messaging, and that's what I'm focusing on. I know there might be uh, other factors that come into play. I mean, it's, it's politics. These things come together. But I'm talking about your uh, particular manifesto, because I've seen the Labour Party's candidate, again, uh, campaigning uh, based on his manifesto. Yes, there have been visits here and there. But I'm saying your message, what is that singular message that you hope we se will sell better than what the either uh, Labour Party, the PDP, but particularly the Labour Party, as we've seen, uh, that will sell better uh, than the Labour Party's candidate. Well, who can other people trust? I have worked as a chief of staff, and for the three plus years I was there, there was no blemish in my records. Who can other people trust? That's the question. I have a history of trying to bring in of bringing back industries. Moribund Industries back to life. Um, as, as Chief of Staff, I was instrumental uh, with the now revived Golden Guinea. As Chief of Staff, I was also instrumental when we were trying to revive the modern ceramics, uh, which died after I, I, I left office. I brought in some bills that would have helped, uh, or suggested some bills that would have helped in build, rebuilding the government. So the question is, who can audience trust? Who has the mandate of Abia people to go and deliver? Um, it's easy to hide behind a political party. It's easy to have advantage from a political party. But, and it's also easy for us to come out and talk about the things we're going to do. My manifesto directly speaks and works on how do we revive the economy of this, of this state. The economy is beaten by, by uh, hardship. The economy is beaten by, by unemployment. The economy is hitting by uh, lack of infrastructure. So, and this, if you look at my manifesto, these are the targets of my manifesto. How do we revive back our, our infrastructure to bring them back to life? How do we bring back economy by industrialization? How do we now use that to reduce unemployment rates? How do we go back and train our people in schools? We are the only candidate for the only political party offering free, free primary and secondary school education. We're the only candidates talking about how to go back to train our teachers to make sure they meet the, the current global uh, performance in teaching. If you look at today, an average child in Lagos or in Abuja who is about five, six years old can use a, a palm pilot. But in, a, in, 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 in our Abia, some kids that are 12, 13 years old are still learning to use those things. So those are the kind of training that we're talking about bringing. Those are the kind of uh, um, development we're talking about, the changes we're trying to, trying to bring to Abia State. And we're confident that we can do that. Stories and the announcement of winners. Watch Channel's television's coverage of the 2023 governorship and state houses of assembly elections. Channel's television, a network built in trust.
Welcome back. We still have with us Mr. Mascot Uzokalu, governorship candidate of the APP in Abia State. Yes, very quickly, Mr. Uh, Mas Mr. Mascot, uh, if you could just answer briefly. If you say that, um, you know, what happened on Saturday during the presidential election was between the church and the political parties, are you discountenancing, you know, the issues that form the base of the agitations that also saw results in other states other than core southeastern states? And uh, as well, well, uh, are you also uh, not also, um, you know, taking into con cognizance the fact that, you know, the Southeast has voted for other candidates besides those from the Southeast in past presidential elections? No, I'm, I'm not discounting the fact that um, there are parties that won elections. Um, even in Abuja, for example, there are, there are candidates who won elections who, who were not even around in the election day. The Obi movement, um, uh, which I give to him, um, which was blazing, uh, was a movement of uh, ideology of people uh, resenting a, a lot of the things that happened in the center and believing in Obi. Um, so what we're trying to say is that let nobody believe it to be the same thing, the same movement on Saturday coming. No, people are now going to look at the issues that affect them internally. The Saturday election was one of, of its kind, which there are places where people did not put up poster. I heard I heard about the place in Abuja where the candidate was not even in the state on the day of the election. He was called back and he had won election. So you ask yourself, what happened to those who are campaigning there? So people voted based on that belief, trying to make bring a change in the system, vote for uh, uh, for, for Governor B. So. Um, However, um, today we've, we, the elections are over and people are coming back to realization that, yes, uh, we need to now look at how do we uh, handle our state. And that's what is important right now. And so anybody thinking it to be the same Tea Party um, from last Saturday, last um, two Saturdays ago um, will be mistaken. And we're looking forward to seeing the results on Saturday as we wish you and all the other candidates the very best in the coming governorship elections. Mr. Mascot Uzokalu is the governorship candidate of the Action People's Party. I hope I got that correctly. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Mascot Uzokalu, for your participation on the program. Uh, there's more coming as I now hand you over to Abuja. Well, yes, indeed. Uh, Samson Itolo joins us next. He is the executive director of Yaga. Good morning. Thank you for coming on today. Good morning. Now, following or owing partly to what transpired in the presidential elections, there seems to be some sort of probably uncertainty about how this Saturday will go. In fact, when I told some persons about the Saturday's election, they were like, oh, is it the Saturday? So, but from your perspective, I mean, you're supposed to have been that mindset of elections coming through this Saturday and then the cases in court and all of this that is going on. What, what's going through your mind as to how Saturday is going to play out? Well, first, we pray Saturday holds um, because, like you said, there's uncertainty. It's affected even our planning and preparations for the elections. Well, the court said they would um, issue a ruling um, this afternoon at 2 p.m., so we'll wait, but whatever the case is, um, it's our considered opinion that um, given the situation, perhaps the election should be moved by either one week or two weeks. Reasons being that if the court delivers a ruling today mm -hmm. and it um, adopts INEC's request, um, INEC would have less than three days to configure the BVAS machines. And the big question is, can the commission do, do that within those three days? in such a way that the BVAS machines will be fully configured and ready for deployment on Saturday. So whatever is the case, regardless of how this ruling goes today, we're already in a difficult situation. And so to prevent further logistical issues during the governorship elections, um, to the extent that it will also undermine the integrity of those elections, I think it's just in the best interest to reschedule the election whatever the court says, um, uh, and, and stakeholders should adopt the ruling um, of the court. But as we... The dicey situation. It's a, it's a dicey uh, situation. Because, one, I, I don't think that when we thought about introducing technology, 
we ever thought that, you know, having governorship elections so close to it would also affect the use of the same technology, for instance, the beavers now. I don't think that we thought about a situation whereby parties would go to court and would need to inspect these materials as part of their evidence. But this is not, this is not the first time this, this is happening. What is just happening is just the consequence and the cost of broken trust. If everything had gone well with the first round of elections, perhaps the parties might, would have approached this differently. And there are two options available to INEC. The first is, yes, if you're going to reconfigure, subject that particular process to public scrutiny. A transparent In fact, be scenario. transparent about the configuration and say, okay, if you synchronize all the data, you have them backed up and the parties can have access to this because they would, that's, that's a critical evidence that they need to, to um, advance their case in, in, in court. So if, I, if INEC is transparent about that entire process, perhaps it might give the parties and the stakeholders comfort that INEC is not onto something untoward towards the management of that data. And the second bit is, which is the second option, just move the um, elections by a week or two give the parties that opportunity. But INEC also needs time to configure the beaver machines. Because mm -hmm. this is Wednesday. You have an election on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And my view is these three days, mm -hmm. it's not sufficient for INEC to configure all those machines in such a way that they will be fully prepared for deployment on Saturday. So whatever the case is, we're in a very difficult, we're in a difficult, mile. difficult situation. And because the other thing about that too is, well, it may, it's looking more like two weeks, because given that this is the presidential elections, and if parties, if the court needs to meet them halfway, because you never know, they may say, look, the time we need to go through certain things, one week may still not cut it. So it, it's really a tricky one. No, you know the Constitution sets a timeline yeah. um, that elections for governorship elections shall hold not earlier than 150 days and not later than 30 days. Mm -hmm. And so if you count 30 days from May 29th, you'll be somewhere around April 28th. So even if the election were moved by two weeks, we're still, still within... within the constitutional time frame. And I think that it, it, would, it would help. It gives INEC also an opportunity to co properly configure the BVAS machines and make them ready. It also gives the parties the opportunity. And I think that if the courts were going to rule, um, this is not being preemptive, it should also be within a reasonable time frame. You cannot give the parties um, um, so much time that it would affect you know, the constitutional time frame for the conduct of those um, elections. Well, it's no, also a dicey yeah. one for the political mm -hmm. parties. I know that this is not something that the CSOs would be concerned about, but some parties might want to build momentum on what they might think they have already gained, if they did gain something, in, mm -hmm. in the uh, presidential elections. I mean, there were some pleasant surprises, or uh, pleasant and unpleasant, and it depends mm -hmm. on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. But upsets that we saw in, in some area, and, and some people will say, um, you know, that some political parties might want to build on the strength of that. I mean, some, you know, small parties that we'd not think could yeah. pull their weight, really pull their weight in these elections. So do, don't you think that that could take the wind out of their sail, this postponement of elections? I, I think for me, I look at what's in the overall national interest okay. um, and not partisan interest. And what's in the overall national interest is to consider these issues, that this entire process has to be transparent. And so whatever decision is taken must uphold that principle of transparency to inspire confidence on the stakeholders. And I say this, that we are having this conversation because of the breach of trust and broken trust as a result of the presidential elections. Um, secondly, it's also INEC's ability to engage with stakeholders. And I wish that, quite frankly, in the last couple of days, the Commission had consulted with stakeholders, political parties, civil society and media, bring them to the table. Say, hey, this is the issue that we have. We need to configure these BVAS machines. This is what we will do. There are two options available. One, we can partition the BVAS um, in such a way that the data for the presidential election is still stored on the device. But will the stakeholders be confident that if you partition the BVAS, it will not lead Street. to any technological issues yep. in the build up to the governorship election? That's one. Two, to say, okay, we're going to configure these BVAS. These BVAS machines are in the States. What is this whole configuration? It's to change the date of the election, the type of the election, and then erase the voter accreditation data. So, okay, parties invite, bring your party agents to the IMEC offices in those locations. As they pick each BVAS machine before the reconfiguration, 
The party agents will have their tally sheets where they take all these records. These are conversations and consultations should have happened, but it's sad that it's been taken to the court, the court. and the court yeah. will have to rule on this. But whichever situation we find ourselves, I think it's important that we are mindful that, yes, there's still time based on the Constitution, mm. but there's need to continue to inspire confidence on the yeah. part of the stakeholders as well as Nigerians. And that's why they say your problem is not your problem, but how you handle your problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, INEC needs to ensure that they don't appear as though they're avoiding questions and engaging, because this is a public institution we're talking about here. But well, we thank you for coming on, uh, Samson. Always a delight, thanks. Executive Director Yaka. Well, that is the show today, but we will be back tomorrow and ensure that uh, we focus on some of these matters and a lot more when we return, looking towards Saturday, whichever way the pendulum swings. Well, that is the show today. We thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm Chamberlain Oso. I'm Maokwe Ogun Yusuf. Once again, happy International Women's Day. And from here, happy International Women's Day. And make sure you reflect on all of the issues we've raised today as you make your important choice on Saturday. I am Bukola Samuel Wenimo. Hey, from all of us, we love our women. Absolutely. Goodbye. Have a great day. I'm Kairo Vikele.